Praise the Lord. I thank God for another privilege to share with you the word of God. And today I'm going to share with you on how to prosper in hard times. We all face challenges in life, but not to every one of us is aware of how we can use biblical principles on in overcoming challenges we face in life. So I'm going to take you to the Bible and see how we can use the word of God in overcoming challenges we face in life. We are going to start this from the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. The Bible says, So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets from a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. We are going to learn some principles in this uh, scripture to help us in overcoming challenges we face today. The first one is don't move away from the land of your blessing even when things are not going well. We have a tendency of leaving the place, of shifting, of transferring, of doing something different immediately when we face challenges. But uh, I want to tell you that we need to be careful because sometimes it is just a common temptations, common trials in life which can be overcome when we, we, still, we are still there in our uh, place of business. Simon and his partners toiled for nothing. The whole night they were fishing but they found nothing. But they didn't leave their place of business. Instead they stayed there doing something else they could do. And as they were there, God visited them in a, set, in a certain way in s to bless their business. So we need to learn something from this, that God has a specific place for your blessings. Even if you leave the place and go somewhere else, you may still fail because maybe God didn't plan you to go there. But if, when you find anything, any hardship in a place of your business, sometimes it is just the demonic attack. You, even if you run away, that will not be the best option for you because we have the authority. God has given us authority because sometimes the devil can fight us and he can try to stop us from prospering in our life. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 8b, the Bible says, And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. So your blessings are not anywhere. Your blessings are in a specific place God has set has prepared for you not everyone will be successful in any place there is a specific place god has designed specific job specific business god has designed for you to prosper so it is important to know the land which the lord your god has given you and when you see anything contrary anything fighting against you then you stand firm because you know that this is the land god has given me so peter and he, his partners didn't leave the place just because they didn't get fish the whole night. The second one is use whatever you have for the kingdom of God. Although Simon had nothing to do there, they were just waiting for the next night probably where they could go again and try to find if they could get some fish. 
when they were there they had to do something Jesus Christ came to them and was asking the, to, to, to use the boats from, from, from Simon. The Bible shows something specific here to help us, that Simon was in financial crisis, but we ha when he had the call to lend Jesus his boat for, as a platform for evangelistic crusade, he was ready. So sometimes when you find that we couldn't accomplish what we planned to do, but we still have something else to do for the Lord. We can use it. We can use the resources we have for the Lord. And this can open a door for the Lord to bless us in our lives. Because God never blesses a person who has nothing. There are some people who will tend to say, I don't have anything to give to the Lord. No one in this world has nothing to give to the Lord. So we need to be careful because the Bible says that if, if anybody says he has nothing, he will never be blessed and even what he thinks he has can be taken away. We can do this, read this from the book of Matthew 13 verse 12. For to him who has will more be given and will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So whatever we have, let us use it for the kingdom of God. We, even Jesus here didn't tell Peter to give it uh, the boat to him, but he just lent it. So we can give our house, our sitting room, our mattress, or whatever we have temporarily for the kingdom of God when we have crusades, when we, we need them. You can offer, you can give your car temporarily, not necessarily to give it completely to be used for the kingdom of God, but you can still use it, you can still uh, offer it so that it can be used for the kingdom of God and then you take it back again. So this is what Simon did. Simon lent the boat to Jesus because Jesus wanted to speak to the congregation there and he wanted a platform to help him to speak to that multitude there. And the third one is accept instructions if, even if it's co it contradicts your experience. Sometimes God can speak to you to do something which cannot be understood by common sense in your life. So you need to be careful because if you use your mind and not your heart, it is very easy that you can find that you are doing something contrary to the will of God. Simon was experienced in fishing. In verse 4 it says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So after Jesus had spoken to the congregation, now he turned to Simon that I thank you for what you did and now I'm going to do a miracle for you. So when you do something within your capacity for the Lord, the Lord can open a door for you. Simon was experienced in fishing. So he could say, no, Jesus, this is not possible. It's completely impossible to do this at this daytime. It is only in the night. It is only the time we know that it is possible for fishing. But Simon, though, was experienced in fishing. He didn't argue with Jesus' command. He obeyed. People in wedding obeyed Jesus' instruction without question. Let me give you another scripture. John 2, 5. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, I remember the day when Jesus was invited in a wedding and his mother knew that Jesus has been doing some miracles even at home. Uh, so he said, he gave advice to the people there that whatever he says to you, don't even question it, just do it. And we'll see that something unique, something miraculous can happen. So, as you, if you read the whole scripture, uh, the whole chapter of, of John 2, you learn for yourself that a miracle happened because these people when we are told to fill the pots with water and take them to the master of ceremony, they obeyed without questioning. And as, as a result of that, they received a miracle of new of drinks, soft drinks, new drinks which were best, the bet, better than the one they used before. So we have to be careful that we don't uh, we, we accept instructions even if it contradicts our experiences in life. Uh, the fourth one is obey God's voice even if it sounds ridiculous. 
But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. We can also learn something here that it is evident that Simon was doubting the command to go fishing at the time of the day. It was not possible. It was not easy to do that. But still, we see that he obeyed. God knows where your money can be found and the easiest way is to, to locate it. God can show you. Actually, after obeying Jesus, Simon, uh, who was, dou was doubting the, the, the command, but he still obeyed it. Because he says, he's saying, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. The right time for fishing, but we caught nothing. This is impossible. But because it is you, the creator of the universe, commanding me, I'm going to obey and do it. And when they did that, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So sometimes you can find that it becomes difficult for you to obey God just because of your profession, because of your education, of your skills. You, you think that you know it all. It's the time to obey God. Even if something directs you sounds ridiculous and you see for yourself that God can do a miracle in your life. Another thing is that partner with the people who do similar work and business. Learn to partner with the people who do similar work or business. Verse 7, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. After they had filled their own boat, Simon and his partners, they did it together. As after they saw that there was a surplus, an increase, they waved it to their friends from another boat to share the blessings. So it is also the time for you when God blesses you to remember to bless other people because you never know what can happen next. God can bless those people and you can find you in a hard time so that they can even remember you also. So you need to understand this. You live a joyful life when someone somewhere is praising God for bringing you in this world because sometimes we think that if our accounts are full of money, we'll be happy. We can be happy, but will not be joyful because happiness depends on circumstances in life. But joy is, is internal, is, is deep down in your heart. So if you want to get joy in life, you need to make sure that you bless other people. You will feel good when someone is praising God. That I thank God for this man because he's blessing us and this can help you to extend even your days in this world. I'll give you some scriptures also to learn from this more about this one in the book of acts 9 36 to 38 at joppa there was a certain disciple named tabitha which is translated docas this woman was full of good works and charitable deeds which she did but it happened in those days that she became sick and died when they had washed her they laid her in an upper room and this leader was near joppa and the disciples had heard that peter was there they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. So we learn here something that Dorcas, when Dorcas died, this widow who were supported by his Bahamian, they, they called, they said, no, we are going to look for someone we know has, God has gifted him with, uh, with their special gifts. He can raise this lady because we still need her in ministry. Because of that, they made sure that P Peter comes there and do something. And as if you continue reading this scripture, you'll find that Peter prayed and he, that lady was raised from the dead simply because these people needed this lady. So widows canceled the burial of Dorcas because of her great ministry to them. I know that even you, if people pray for you, remember you because of the good deeds you do in their lives, God can even extend your days and your joy in this life. You have to ask yourselves what legacy you leave behind when you leave this world. What legacy will you leave behind when you leave this world? You need to ask yourself because even if you have a lot of money, one day you leave this world. And when you leave this world, what 
people will remember you for. You need to think about this. And where are you after this, after leaving this world? But also we have to learn about financial prosperity should bring you closer to Jesus. Sometimes when we prosper in life, many people when they prosper in life, they leave, they go far away from the Lord. They don't even attend to church services. They don't even give to the Lord. They don't even participate, even participate in any ministry. But what happened to Simon Peter after receiving this great uh, miracle? The Bible says after Peter received that great miracle, instead of just celebrating, he fell down to at Jesus' knees and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Instead of celebrating, Simon felt unworthy before, the, before Jesus. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this, Lord. You need to reach a point that you feel that. You don't feel that you have what you have today because we are so educated, because of your, your hard working. You have to remember that it is Jesus, it is your Lord God who strengthens you, empowers you, enables you to do what you are doing. And when he was commanded in deep sea, he said, Master. But this time he's saying, Lord. Initially, when uh, Peter was told by Jesus to put nets in deep sea, he said, Master. But this time we see Peter saying, Lord. That means he had now a deeper revelation of who Jesus is. We need a deeper revelation of who Jesus is. That is no longer a master. He is now a Lord in my life. You will receive to, from Jesus depending on how you regard him. If you just regard him as a teacher, he will reveal himself to you as a teacher. But if we regard him as a Lord, he will do powerful and great things in your life. So don't limit Jesus. Jesus can do the miraculous in your life. And again, you can learn that you have to use your experience and skills for the kingdom of God. Verse 10 says, And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So you see, Jesus told Simon to use the same strategies in fishing people. If you have a strategy, you know the strategies of fishing in the water, now I want to use the same strategies in fishing people. So maybe you, you have learned, you, are, you know agriculture, accountants, business, management, theology, whatever you know, whatever you have in your life, please use it for the kingdom of God. You are not supposed just to be a donor, just to give some money to support financially. You can also support by your skills, by your experience, by your profession to the kingdom of God. God wants to benefit from your skill, profession, and experience. Because by doing so, you help to reduce the use, the, the expenses of using the money in the church or in ministry. But also we learn that we have to acknowledge that Jesus owns everything you need in your life. So when they had brought their boats to the land, to land, they forsook all and followed him. So this scripture shows, tells us something very powerful that these people, they learned something after Jesus, when Jesus did that miracle. After Simon, Peter and partners discovered that Jesus can grow a business in a minute, they abandoned everything and followed him. What does this mean? That they, 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 were, they had a, big, a business and they expected to get maybe that amount of fish for several weeks, for several days or weeks. And now Jesus is doing a miracle of, the, of, 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 a, of, a, of a large number of fish in a minute. So they said this now is really a provider. If Jesus is a provider, now we can save him because he can do more than what we expect and do in our life. So they abandoned even their business and said, now we are going to save the 
who is the, the creator of the universe, who is able to do such a great miracle in a second or in a minute. So you have to understand this, that when you know this, it helps you that Jesus is not, did not just come to take us to heaven. He did, did not just come to save us from sin. He came to save us from poverty also. So we have to understand that we are not just here living in poverty, in abject poverty and expecting to go to heaven alone. Jesus can still bless here. We have a lot of scriptures and even more, m most of the parables of, of Jesus were related to money. That means that Jesus can bless his people and wants his people to enjoy life right from here in the world even before going to heaven. Psalms 37, 25 says, have been, Since I have been young and now am old, yet have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread. We have a lot of believers today who are still begging bread and uh, I'm not judging you, I'm not condemning you, I don't like you to feel condemned, but I just want to remind you that when you pray, use scriptures like this one to enrich your prayers that Lord, the psalmist said, even when he was young and until he became old, he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Why am I begging bread? Why am I, do I feel that I am forsaken? Help me, Jesus. So use this scripture and God can reveal to you if there is anything wrong in your life, can reveal to you what is missing in your life. Maybe you need some, some training. Maybe you need, you need some directions to be led on by Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, to know where your blessings are. So we, we need to use these scriptures when we pray to make sure that the God we serve today is the same God of the Bible, is the same God of Elijah, of Elisha, of Apostle Paul, and many other apostles and prophets, and not the other, the, 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 another God we are serving today. I believe if we pray like that, God will reveal himself, himself in our life, and will tell us if there is anything wrong somewhere, to make sure that we enjoy life in this world and then we go to heaven and rejoice with our Lord forever. My prayers for you today, I pray that God will help you to know where your blessings can be located so that you don't toil in vain. Because sometimes we toil in vain because we, are, we don't know, we don't know how to locate where blessings, our blessings are from the Lord. But also, you need to I pray that you, God can help you to utilize your resources for, for kingdoms, for God's kingdom, so that when you leave this world, you can be rewarded in heaven. You have a lot of resources at your disposal which can be used for the kingdom of God. I pray that God will open your eyes and use them to help you, not only in this world, but to help you that when you go to heaven, you at least... You you, you, you sit close to, to the Lord, to our Lord Jesus. At least to become close to those people who suffered for Jesus, who are persecuted for his kingdom, and now their the, the tears are wiped in heaven. But also I pray that God will deliver you from self-centeredness and selfishness so, so that you can share your blessings with others. I know that this has been very difficult for many people, especially now after we have been facing a lot of challenges like COVID-19 and many others, people now are striving to, 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 to make sure that they only solve their personal problems at home and they are in their families. I want to help you that this is not the time to forget God. God is the only one who can protect us, is the only one who can help us even when the world economy is shaken but the economy of Jesus Christ of God who is the creator of the universe will not be shaken. So it is the time to give to God than any time we have ever given to Jesus because he will remember us. Because this is the time economies of many countries in the world, even great nations have been challenged. So it is the time to run, to go to Jesus and ask Jesus to show us a way to direct us, to help us to help us that we are not becoming dependent. We have been dependent for a long time. It's the time now to be 
strong to be self-reliant, self-sufficient in our life. And this is only possible if we put our total trust in our Lord God Almighty. So I pray that God will help you as you have heard this message that you can apply it in your life so that you can change our situations, our lives, and in our communities. Because if we, we, are, in, we are changed individually, we are transformed individually, then we'll change the community, the faith communities. And then after that, the entire world will be converted and will be transformed for, for our Lord God Almighty. So may the Lord strengthen you and help you to use these uh, biblical principles so that you become, uh, you overcome challenges you have been facing for so long, the, the hardship we have been facing for so long, and we have been failing, we have lost the hope, and we have been discouraged. But I want this message to strengthen you and help you that you can stand firm in your Lord and be confident that you, will, you are more than conquerors, you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ. God bless you and we'll learn more the, about this next time as God wills. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Amen.